first on the Western Slope. You're watching KREX 5 News at 5. Good evening and thank you for choosing KREX 5 News. I'm Rob Hagan. Authorities are identifying a suspect in custody accused of shooting and killing 10 people on Monday at a grocery store in Boulder. Witnesses described sheer terror inside the store, some scrambling to find places to hide as others escaped from any exit they could find. Jonathan Bigliotti reports from Boulder. Denny Strong, 20 years old. Nevin Stadinsky, 23. Authorities in Colorado read the names of the victims in Monday's mass shooting at a supermarket in Boulder, promising justice for their families. I feel numb. Um, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to talk to victims, uh, their families. Um, you know, it's tragic. The 21 year old suspected shooter, identified as Ahmed Alyssa, has been charged with 10 counts of first degree murder. Police say he used an AR 15 rifle to gun down multiple people, including 51 year old officer Eric Talley, a father of seven who joined the Boulder Police Department in 2010. He's a very kind man, and he didn't have to go into policing. He had a profession before this, but he felt a higher calling, and he was willing to die to protect others. Inside the store, Ryan Borowski says no one knew what was going on. I uh, heard, you know, one loud bang. I uh, thought somebody just dropped something, an employee or something, and then another. And then by the third one, everybody was running. President Biden called on Congress to act following the grocery store shooting and the spa shootings in the Atlanta area just six days ago. I don't need to wait another minute, let alone an hour, to take common sense steps will save the lives in the future. Monday's attack was the seventh mass killing in the U.S. this year. Investigators have not established a motive, but are looking into whether the suspect was suffering from some type of mental illness at the time. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Boulder, Colorado. Governor Polis joined other leaders today in remembering those killed in Monday's shooting spree. He's ordered flags to be lowered to half staff on all public buildings statewide from now until sunset on April 1st. Flags had barely been raised back to full mast after the tragic shooting in Atlanta that claimed eight lives and now a tragedy here close to home at a grocery store that could be any of our neighborhood grocery stores. There will be time to come to pursue justice, repair damage, seek answers and pursue remedies. But today, we remember, we appreciate, and we honor the lives of those who were killed. Flags will be lowered for 10 days to remember each of the 10 people who lost their lives. President Biden is calling on Congress to pass legislation to reduce gun violence in the wake of Monday's deadly shooting in Boulder and last week's fatal spa shootings in Atlanta. The president's comments come as the Senate Judiciary Committee held a previously scheduled hearing on gun violence. Skyler Henry reports. Member of the Constitution. Members of the Senate Judiciary Committee addressed Monday's deadly mass shooting in Colorado during a previously scheduled hearing on gun violence. Inaction has made this horror completely predictable. Inaction by this Congress makes us complicit. Every time there's a shooting, we play this ridiculous theater where this committee gets together and proposes a bunch of laws that would do nothing to stop these murders. Among the witnesses, a woman whose mother was shot and killed by a home invader. If a strong background check law was in place, I could be having breakfast with my mother instead of appearing before your committee. While a former Texas state representative who lost her parents in the Luby's cafeteria mass shooting offered a different view on gun laws. I was mad as hell at my legislators because they had legislated me and others in that restaurant out of the right to be able to, to defend ourselves. President Biden called on Congress to pass what he says are common sense steps to reduce gun violence. The United States Senate, I hope some are listening, should immediately pass the two House pass bills that close loopholes in the background check system. This Senate will be different. 
Senate Majority Senate Leader Chuck Schumer promised to bring the correct. legislation to the Senate floor, but it's unclear if the bills will pass. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. According to Mace County Public Health, as part of the state's effort to allow businesses to increase capacity, it's working on a new phase of the COVID dial. Green on the dial would be 35 cases per 100,000 people. Right now, Mesa County is currently at 40.7, and the county is aiming to ease COVID restrictions by May 1st. The state health department is also working to ease restrictions for Coloradans. Changes to the state's COVID dial could go into effect as soon as this Thursday. The move will put three counties into level green on the dial, which is the least restrictive level. Areas currently in level blue will see relaxed restrictions on bars, retail stores, offices, and some manufacturing facilities. The dial update will also make it easier for counties to move into level green like Mesa County, which could be about a week away from going green. So it's missing the percent positivity and the hospitalizations. Maybe they're completely doing away with that. I think that makes great sense because uh, hospitalizations are, are super low. I think we were at seven yesterday. For green, um, most of the restrictions have been dropped. You know, there, there are a few capacity things that were, were um, raised a little bit, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the restrictions have been dropped and they're leaving the discretion up to each county. There are 11 new positive COVID-19 cases in Mesa County, according to the data dashboard. This brings the total to 13,607 confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic. The county's one week average positivity rate is 1.3% with a one week case rate of 40.7. The county reports 11 days of declining or stable new hospital admissions. For nearly half a year, more than 500 movie theaters owned by Regal Cinemas, including one here in Grand Junction, have been dark due to the pandemic. But that's about to change starting early next month. Regal's parent company, the Cineworld Group, is announcing the second largest theater chain in the U.S. will reopen starting April 2nd. Attendance will be limited from 25 to 50 percent capacity in hundreds of locations. Regal had been one of the most notable holdouts in the gradual reopenings of cinemas nationwide. The company has agreed to a new multi-year deal with Warner Brothers and starting next year, the studio's releases will have a 45 day exclusive window at Regal, roughly slicing in half the traditional period. Dozens of jobs are coming soon to the Western Slope. That's what Ecogen Biosciences is creating with their new location in Delta. The company used to be in Palisade, but after being sold, it was consolidated with nine other locations and moved to Delta. They're creating hemp derived products and jobs all here on the Western Slope. Carry X5's Lena Takata has more. Ashley Henson has been working for Ecogen since the business was located in Palisade. So I have a science background and getting into the CBD, which was a new market, and doing all these things, I heard about all the benefits that I can create and actually working and helping people and doing it on this side has been fantastic. Originally from Montrose, Henson is thrilled a job like hers exists so close to home. It's really great to use my science knowledge, plus to go through and then learn all the science background that goes along with it in this facility. It's been a great experience. Another employee echoes a similar sentiment. You know, I, I used to work in, in big cities, so when this opportunity came up, I, I jumped on it as soon as I can, you know, just Having a good job in here in a, in a rural area is just a blessing. The company has created 70 jobs on the Western Slope, and those jobs include everything from manufacturing to lab analytics that require a PhD. I think it's a great opportunity for this area. Um, it's provided such you know, great jobs um, just for around this community. The new location in Delta is the result of Ecogen consolidating nine other locations into one. Their goal was to create a more streamlined and efficient production environment. So we are an ingredient company at heart. Uh, we do everything from uh, hemp derived uh, ingredients like CBD isolate, uh, CBG isolate. Ecogen also works with other Western Slope hemp growers. Delta Ag, H&H and uh, Moose Ag have been really good partners to Ecogen Biosciences uh, over the past six months. And says their combined efforts could put the Western Slope on the map in the hemp industry. There's a lot of hemp business on the Western Slope and I think we can be leaders in the, in the national marketplace. That was Lena Takata reporting. 
The products made by Ecogen are used to create dietary products like CBD oil drops and capsules and cosmetics like lotions. And when KREX 5 News returns, Chief Meteorologist Russ Pappas will have your complete weather forecast. We'll be back in 80 seconds.